Ontario Premier Doug Ford pictured here after having some trouble with a water bottle, so they switched him to IV. Seriously, why is his water bottle like this? Anyways, I have a fun update on Doug Ford and his entire government. They're under active criminal investigation. What fun. As the Premier's office has confirmed that members of the government have been interviewed by the RCMP. This is part of a larger criminal probe into the opening up of the Green Belt. You know, that incredibly corrupt thing that Doug Ford did and then just said, whoopsies, and hoped would go away. Yeah, it's not doing that. Turns out $8 billion is enough money to get the attention of the RCMP. Don't worry, though. Doug Ford said that he has, quote, nothing to hide, which is definitely something we all believe. He said, quote, come in and do whatever you have to, but I want full cooperation. They know that because there's nothing to hide here. Let's get on with it. Nothing to hide here is really something to hear from the Ford government who does everything they can to fight freedom of information requests at every turn. Like, they have tried to cover their tracks every step of the way with the green belt. But now that they're caught, they're saying, oh, no secrets here, heavens to Betsy. And the RCMP have confirmed that the investigation is ongoing, but they have not yet approached Doug Ford himself. But it's just an important reminder that the Ford government is incredibly corrupt. Like, how they are polling at 44% baffles me. But I think it's pretty obvious why Doug Ford is trying to rush the election. He wants to get it out of the way before the results of this investigation. Why else would he be in such a hurry? Other than, you know, corruption. It's Doug Ford's whole thing. Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moe pictured here deciding that for some reason it was wise to share a very sweaty selfie wearing what appears to be a bathrobe. Why? I don't know, why not? Dog's happy. Although this feels very much like the sort of weird text you get from your dad when you ask them what they're doing. Anyways, he continues to find endless money for already profitable industries, while at the same time insisting that he has no money to fund education or healthcare. This time it's a half a billion dollars for the resource industry. They're rolling out massive incentives for new mines. So for 11 different kinds of critical minerals, they are going to be giving you stacks of money. Although to be clear, to have access to that half billion dollars, you need to invest a mil minimum of 10 million. What a deal. So essentially, endless public money for profitable industries. And to give you a sense of the scale of this, this is a quarter of our annual education budget. The K-12 education budget is $2 billion. Now we're just giving fully a quarter of that to the resource industry an already incredibly profitable industry. Like, how much money do they need? Tell you one thing they do need, public services for their workers. We need roads, schools, healthcare, but we got no money for those. Half a billion dollars for mining companies, though, we got that. And sweaty photos in the backs of trucks, those too, we got those. That's about it, though. Education or healthcare, you're on your own. It's the Scott Mo way. I want you to take a second and look at this map. It's of the GTA. And every single one of these map icons indicates something. Take a moment, try to guess. We're waiting, we're waiting. What did you think they were? If you thought businesses that are hiring temporary foreign workers, you are correct. Each of these locations has submitted an LMIA, a labor market impact analysis, in order to hire a temporary foreign worker. This is based on the claim that they simply could not find any Canadians to do that work in Toronto. Like they are claiming that every single one of these organizations simply could not find people. And it is not limited to Toronto. This is Vancouver. And the reason why we have this data is because a Reddit user compiled all of it from the government into a website. You can check it out for yourself, lmiamap.ca. And you can see specifically where employers are applying and what they're applying for. And you would be astonished at how many of these are just food services jobs. Jobs that there are people in Canada willing to do, just not for the wages offered. So to keep wages down, they bring in temporary foreign workers. It's not a solution, it's just more exploitation. I want to take a second to highlight this absolutely terrifying post from Pierre Poiliev. Because this is nuts. This is just straight up fascist propaganda. We will make things here again. Our workers on our soil under our flag. This is what it means to bring it home. He's got a photo of himself surrounded by applauding onlookers in front of a flag. And if that soil thing sounds vaguely familiar, it's because it is. Blood and soil was a major slogan in Nazi Germany. Like, this is some terrifying dog whistle stuff. Like, if you see somebody posting things talking about our workers on our soil under our flag, and that doesn't send off every fascist alarm bell you have in your head, you need to be paying closer attention. And he's literally putting new spins on Nazi slogans. Like, if you see this and you are willing to overlook it, I can't help you. He is making it very clear who he is and what he's about. 
and sending very clear signals to his base. I want to take a second to talk about the BC Liberals. Or, sorry, BC United. Very different. How? Unclear. Just different. They've been attempting to rebrand themselves, and it's going terribly. And you may remember when they shared this poll suggesting that they were in second place, even though they are very obviously in third. Well, I took a little bit of a closer look at that poll. You know, the one commissioned by BC United that made them still look like they were in third place. Turns out their attempts to rig that poll still didn't work. Like, imagine putting out a rigged poll and you're still in third. I want you to just real quick look at the people they polled. 29% of the people polled were males 65 or up. 35% were females 65 or up. Out of 775 total people surveyed, less than 40 were under the age of 35. Like, this is a truly awful poll. Some of the worst sampling you're ever going to see. So 338 Canada has actually thrown this poll out because it's so useless. And we have a far more accurate poll that puts them far further down. You know, one from Leger that isn't rigged. But it's not even the only way they're failing. Because if you head over to the BC Elections website, you can see that they're going to show up on the ballot as BC United, former BC Liberal Party. Nothing says successful rebrand like including your former name in your name. It's going great. If the fake polls didn't work, the fake name's gonna. Oh, BC Liberals. Is this seriously the best you can do? This is your A-game. Okay, sure. Best of luck. Conservative leader Pierre Poiliev has weighed in on the issue at the front of Canadians' minds. Is he the Olympics? No, he refuses to talk about those, because he doesn't want to give any credit to the CBC. It's Jordan Peterson and the fact that his appeals have failed. Pierre Poiliev leapt into action to defend Peterson's right to free speech that he doesn't have. Canada has freedom of expression. But he's claiming that another government bureaucracy threatens to ban a Canadian from practicing his profession because he expressed political opinions the state doesn't like. Now they force him to undergo a political re-education. So this is just an obvious lie. Just straight up lie to your face. Because the discipline for Jordan Peterson did not come from the Canadian government in any way. It came from the Ontario College of Psychologists. It's an independent body that regulates the profession. It has nothing to do with the Canadian government. And he's not being forced to undergo re-education. He's going through HR training. But this is an entire misrepresentation. The state had nothing to do with this. Justin Trudeau had nothing to do with this. And he's defending somebody who was facing a consequence for anti-trans speech. And for encouraging a member of the public to harm themselves. And all that the consequence is, is that in order to continue calling himself a clinical psychologist, he needs to go through social media training. That's it. So if Pierre Poiliev genuinely believes in free speech, does that apply to public servants? Does he think that public servants should be able to criticize him as they please? Because if so, this criticism is going to get much more directed. And far meaner. So this person saw Pierre Poiliev doing a blood and soil thing and dismissed it out of hand because Justin Trudeau has painted his face black in the past. Couple of things. For starters, the blackface thing happened in the 90s. Like, I'm not saying it was okay, but I am saying it was 30 years ago. If you don't think that a person can change in any meaningful way over the span of 30 years, I can't help you. Like, he's not doing it today. He's openly said that he regrets it. It was wrong. What else do you want? What else would you have him do? Or is it just permanently disqualifying? Because that's ridiculous. If we're going to eliminate somebody from public life because of a mistake they made in their youth, then we have much more to do. Like, Scott Moe killed someone. Doug Ford was a hash dealer. Two-thirds of the SAS Party caucus have drunk driving convictions. None of those are disqualifying in your mind, but Justin Trudeau makes a mistake in the 90s, and then he's just out. Like, I'm not defending it. It's not okay. But if you are willing to vote for a fascist because of a mistake somebody else made in the 90s, you have lost the plot. It's that simple. So, when we talk about how conservatives are being weird... This, this is what we're talking about. Like, this person saw a blood and soil post from Pierre Poiliev and immediately freaked out about Justin Trudeau. Like, do you think this is a reasonable response to something Pierre Poiliev said? To talk about blackface? Like, if you actually thought that him wearing blackface was traumatizing to black people, why would you bring it up constantly? And you're implying that he has COVID? Like, do you think COVID's funny? You rooting for people to get sick? I also appreciate that they started counting my posts. I make a dozen posts a day, man. I post about whatever's going on. Pierre Poiliev's out there doing goofy things every day. Justin Trudeau is not. But I assure you, if Justin Trudeau posts any fascist propaganda, I'll let you know. 
The real question is, why are you so eager to overlook fascist propaganda from Pierre Poilievre? Like, why did you see that and immediately get enraged at Justin Trudeau? Seems like the propaganda is working. On you, at least. Okay, I guess we're doing this again. I don't support Justin Trudeau. I have never voted for Justin Trudeau. I've never voted for the Liberal Party under Justin Trudeau. I agree with some of their policies. I disagree with many of them. But I will defend him on here. I've also defended Pierre Poilievre on here. And Jagmeet Singh, too. Because my primary loyalty is to truth. To facts. And so people make up stuff about Pierre Poilievre or Trudeau. I'm going to call him on it because I believe in having authentic discussions about the real things happening, not just hot takes. So when people come in with the endless loop of Justin Trudeau attacks that we've heard a bazillion times, like the fact that he wore blackface in the 90s, that's not any sort of actual conversation. It's a thought-terminating cliche. It's a thing you repeat in order to save yourself needing to think. I'm trying to push nuance, subtlety, actual understanding. That's not a partisan thing. There isn't a single political party I'm particularly impressed by is three different flavors of neoliberalism, but I am focused on the truth. Why aren't you? This person is agonizingly close to figuring it out. So I criticize politicians when they lie to you or when they write bad policy. But they find it strange that they've only agreed with me once because I criticize the conservatives more than the liberals of the NDP. Do you think that's because I like them? Or do you think it's because the conservatives lie more, write bad policy more? You see, conservative policies across Canada require an abandonment of evidence. They require a public that is willing to believe whatever they say. Like when it comes to climate change, when it comes to COVID, when it comes to resource investments, when it comes to safe supply. Evidence doesn't support their positions on any of those things. So in order for you to agree to them, you need to abandon evidence. So they lie to you all the time. And I call them on it. And you think, God, he calls the conservatives out way more than any other party. Yeah, because they lie to you way more than any other party. And until you recognize that, I can't help you. Like, if you think I call them out because I hate them, no. I hate them, but that's not why I call them out. I call them out because they're liars. They lie to you. This sort of question belies a very flawed mindset. This person's asking, who do you vote for? First of all, there's no election right now. Nobody's voting for anyone. But also, outside of an election cycle, if you're already decided on who you're going to vote for, why? We haven't seen any policy platforms. No costed policies at all. All we have right now is vibes and slogans. From all major parties. You have no earthly idea who the candidates in your riding are going to be. So how have you already decided who you're voting for? Are you voting based on beliefs, policies, ideas, or identity? Are you just saying, I'm a conservative, so I support conservatives? Because if you've already decided your vote outside of an election cycle in the absence of policy, all that tells me is you don't actually care. You just want to be a part of a team. And you've decided the conservatives and don't really care beyond that. Like, if you've already chosen a party, please specify which policies in their platform you support. You know, those platforms that don't exist. Those ones. It's a made-up tale. It's a total fabrication. It never happened. It never happened. This one was invented by a writer. Not this time. It never happened. It's false. It never happened. It's a fake. It's fiction. It's an urban legend that never happened. 